Hey, my name is Rachel. Glad you could make it. All right, everyone. So today I'm going to attempt to make this new veggie burger recipe from Medical Medium, Anthony William. I saw it on Instagram the other day. So it's summertime, which means it is barbecue season, which means I am craving burgers. So I was really excited when I saw this recipe because I've been really, really, really wanting a burger, but I want to make sure my burgers are made of healthy whole plant foods and I tend to have some good luck with medical medium recipes. They tend to be pretty good. So let's give it a whirl here. So I'll be following this recipe from the medical medium website. I'll link it below and I'm gonna try to follow it exactly as it says. My only difference is it says, you know, to use any sort of gluten-free bun for the burger bun, but I decided to use some collard wraps. Because honestly, I went to Whole Foods and I was searching for a gluten-free burger that wasn't loaded with a bunch of like sketchy ingredients and I really couldn't find any. So I was like, I guess that's my sign to just, you know, use greens and just keep this like grain free. I honestly haven't really been having grains lately, so maybe it's for the best. Got a collar tier. I have all my ingredients all prepped and ready to go. So let's just get started. So the first thing it says is to put a nonstick pan on medium high heat. So I got my ceramic pan here. The ceramic pan has been amazing. It's my first ever ceramic pan I've gotten. It's called Masterclass is the brand. I just got it at Marshalls. But yeah, I definitely recommend getting a ceramic pan versus just a regular non-stick one because those are full of like weird chemicals. And I feel like this works way better than any non-stick pan I've ever used. So I've got that pan heating up and now I need to add in onions and mushrooms, just a cup of each. This is just a yellow onion in here, just some regular like cremini mushrooms chopped up. So I need to put these in for two to three minutes until the onions soften. Once those are ready, I'll be adding in one and a half cups of sweet potatoes, just diced up. Also adding in garlic, two cloves of minced garlic, tomato paste, and coconut aminos. So this tomato paste, I was so glad I was able to find tomato paste without citric acid in it, which is sometimes pretty difficult. Luckily, I went to Trader Joe's and the regular tomato paste had citric acid, but this one, this Italian tomato paste, the only ingredients are tomato and salt. So that's just perfect, but it does say it's double concentrated. So I don't know if I should use less of it. It says to use one tablespoon. I've never used this before, I just bought it. I mean, I guess if this is double concentrated, I should just use half of what it says. So I guess I'll be using half of a tablespoon of this full tablespoon of my coconut aminos. Let me get my garlic minced. I'll just throw that in with my potatoes. I feel so fancy I like actually took the time to cut things up and put it in little jars. I love this garlic mincer. Got it from Amazon and it works really, really well. I really don't know what these are gonna taste like. I mean, I'm not expecting it to taste like beef. I'm not delusional, but I hope it tastes good. Now I'm supposed to let that cook for three to five minutes, stirring often until the sweet potato starts to soften. I feel like that'll take longer than five minutes for a sweet potato, but we'll see. All right, it's been a few minutes, and now I'm supposed to add a fourth cup to a half cup of water and then cover it all with the lid and let it just sit at medium high heat for 15 to 20 minutes. So let's do that. In the meantime, I'm gonna make some ketchup. For my simple, healthy ketchup, I'm gonna be using tomato paste, some dried oregano, lemon juice, some garlic powder, and maple syrup for some sweetness. Yeah, I'm just gonna play this one by ear, you know? Let's add in about a tablespoon of this tomato paste. Let's have half a lemon here, I'm just gonna juice all of that. Do half a teaspoon of the garlic powder, quarter teaspoon of the oregano. Um, I'm just gonna start with half a teaspoon and then add more as I go. Let's mix this together. This did not make very much. It tastes very marinara-y, you know, more so than regular ketchup. Let's add in a little bit more maple syrup to make it sweeter. I think that tastes good. I'm actually, I'm gonna double this whole recipe again to make more. We got some ketchup going on. We'll add that later. We got all these toppings planned. It's gonna be great. I'm gonna let that stuff cook for now. I'll see you in a sec. 
After 15 minutes, the sweet potatoes are very cooked, so I'm taking that off the heat and I need to let that cool completely. So I'm gonna put it in a bowl and put it in the refrigerator. It smells really good. I mean, onions and garlic sauteing never not smells good to me. All right, I don't know how long this is gonna take to cool in the fridge, but I'm gonna start a little stopwatch and I'll let you know how long it takes. I'll just keep checking on it. All right, it ended up taking half of an hour for this to be cool. And now it is time to put it in a food processor. Instead of putting it in a food processor, I'm gonna be using an immersion blender. All right, well, it looks pretty gross, but I did take a little taste of it and it tastes pretty good. I'm gonna transfer all of this into a bigger bowl because we will be adding in some dry ingredients. So I'm supposed to first process some walnuts separately. So this is a cup of raw walnuts. So let's immersion blend these. Oh God. Well, that's not gonna work because that will make a humongous mess. So I'm gonna put these in my blender and hope that works. Much better. So I'm going to add this in with my potatoes. So that's what that looks like. And now we're adding the rest of the dry ingredients. So we got a third cup of ground flaxseed. This is definitely like a higher fat meal, but it's all healthy whole plant food. So that's great. For our spices, it's a half teaspoon of smoked paprika a half teaspoon of ground cumin, and a quarter teaspoon of black pepper. Just put that all in here. It says the mixture should be firm enough to shape into patties, and if it's not, then just to add more flax seeds. You know, flax seeds are a great binder for things. So now I'm supposed to make them into patties, and you have the option of putting them in the refrigerator for an hour to make the patties like firmer, or it says to just put them right on your non-stick skillet, and I'm not waiting another hour for this, and these are gonna be all wrapped up anyway, so who cares about firmness, right? Is it just gonna stick to my hands? Actually, okay, I'm gonna add some more flax seeds just so it holds its own a little bit more. I'm gonna add an eighth of a cup more. I'm worried that these are just gonna like stick right to the pan and fully fall apart. Here's what it looks like. Yeah, that's definitely holding together better and my hands are wet, so I think that helps. I don't know if I've ever made burgers from scratch before, like made my own veggie burgers. All right, these are my patties and let's get to grilling. It says four to five minutes on each side. These look like cat food, but we're not gonna let that stop us. All right, while those are cooking, I'll show you my burger toppings. So I got some romaine here for some crunch. I know we got collards, but I want it crunchy. And I got some red onions, some tomato, and avocado, and of course, I'll be adding our ketchup. Okay, I waited more like six minutes. It's just, it's cooking a little slower, but I think we're ready to flip now. They're not the prettiest in the world, but I was really glad they actually didn't stick to my ceramic pan. So that's great. I was very worried about that. And I will let those cook for another like five, six minutes and then I'll check on them again. I just, I wanna make sure it's cooked through the middle. I feel like the outside's getting crispy, but I don't really know about the inside part. While those are cooking, I guess I'll prep some collards. So for this, you need to cut off the big stem. You can always save this for uh, putting in like a smoothie or a juice. So set that aside for now. And then also try to like shave it a little bit. I'm not super experienced with collard wraps, but this is what I read about online. And then um, right before we cook it, I'm just gonna like steam it for like, a second in that pan. Just kind of put it in there so it's a little more malleable and hot, but actually these aren't too bad because they have been sitting out in my hot kitchen. It's been about another seven minutes and it is getting crispy on the other side, but the middle still feels pretty soft. So I'm gonna let it hang out for a little bit more. Okay, it's been over like 10 minutes and they're starting to get a little bit too crispy on the outside and I don't want it to burn. So I think this is about as good as we're gonna get. They're still pretty soft on the inside. Let's hope that's okay. Here they are. Okay, I'm going to try to steam up a couple collards real quick just so they're easier to bend. And let's just assemble. Put my <laughs> little soft burger 
in here. <laughs> I don't know what part to place it at. I've never tried to wrap a burger in collard. Let's put a little bit of ketchup on. Put on our lettuce. Add some tomato, red onion, some avocado. <laughs> feel like I'm doing this all in the wrong order. I don't know what I'm doing. Well, let's try to wrap it. Okay. Okay. Is it going to stay together? Not really, but it's kind of staying together actually. There is our collard. Oh my God, our collard wrapped burger. I'm going to cut it open now, okay? If anyone wants to be my friend and help me film things, let me know. I'm trying to cut this open without destroying it. Oh my God, this like fully worked. Let's bite into this. This was definitely a labor of love. Ooh, that looks so cute. Moment of truth. That's really good. I'm trying to think what it tastes like, but it just, I don't know, it tastes like vegetables and I don't know, there's the garlic, the onion. I definitely do taste the flaxseed a lot because there is a lot of flax seeds in it. So it's kind of like a nutty vegetable taste, which makes sense, but I'm enjoying it. But we did it. We made the medical medium veggie burgers right from scratch all the way, burgers. I'm impressed with myself, what can I say? If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up so I know you liked it and you can subscribe to my channel. I'll be making new videos every Monday and Thursday. Leave me a comment. Tell me what you thought about all that's going on right here. And as always, thank you so much for being here. Goodbye! So I know you liked it and you can subscribe to my channel. I have food in my mouth. That feeling when you make a burger from scratch and it doesn't taste disgusting. <laughs>